hooked up right there. Fish on. Man, just endless, endless fish. Oh, there we go. It's a nice, respectable walleye right there. Let's let him go. Ooh. Oh. Big storm coming in. Well, we got about um, two hours, hour and a half to kind of fish here before it's just going to torrentially downpour and thunder, apparently. So we're going to take advantage of it. Mitch is, now has me in the water, and I'm waiting for Mitch to get here, and then we're going to take off and catch some fish. But uh, it's going to be a quick little pre-storm outing, and uh, we should hopefully catch a whole bunch of walleyes. Um, and I absolutely love, love night fishing. Generally, there's less pressure, and uh, life is good at night. So we'll see here in a second, but it's time to catch some fish. All right, we have arrived. I'm going to drop the trolling motor down, and we are basically going to begin kind of looking for a spot that we want to set up. And basically, a lot of times, um, if the current's really raging, you might have to go with an anchor, but it's not so strong here where we can actually use spot lock on the Minn Kota, and it'll be able to sit still just fine. All right, well, as I'm sitting here editing this, I realized we had a massive audio flaw, and I wasn't even gonna make this into a video, but I figured, why not? It could probably benefit some people out there. So um, we're gonna roll with that. I think I've gone through more mics in my short YouTube history than probably anybody out there. I don't think there's probably anybody worse on camera equipment, but basically the game plan, a lot of times on night fishing this time of year, on a casting bite, um, a lot of times it's swim baits, and if you, especially in current scenarios, and you gotta kinda use, um, you know, depending on how dirty the water is, how much current you have, that a lot of times dictates what you're using for a swim bait or plastic, right? And we're, like I said, we're always putting these on jig heads, but if I'm fishing very low flow, very clear water, and uh, you know, it, it's much easier for fish to track bait. So I don't need a super big thumpy type of bait. Now when the current picks up a little bit like I did on this night, and the water started dirtying up a little bit as it did throughout the day that day, because we got some rain, um, generally you can go to a little bit bigger, a little bit thumpier baits. And the number one swim bait I've been fishing the last couple of years, is the Kalen's Tickle Tail. Here it is right here. Not sure how all the cameras, the camera's gonna focus, but it's got a whole bunch of appendages. It comes in a 4.8 inch, which is this one, the bigger size, a 3.8 inch right here. And this year, new for this year, a real finessey 2.8 inch, which we're gonna be fishing a whole bunch, especially for finicky, finicky fish or up north here in Northern Wisconsin. So um, one little tip on these, when I'm fishing a really light head, like when I go down to eighth or quarter, one thing I like to do, and this is kind of my standby, I pull these appendages off the back of this thing, and it makes this tail walk and wobble a lot more at a very slow speed. Now, if you're gonna go like above quarter ounce, which you would most of the time, probably if you're gonna be fishing a big thumpy swim bait like this, you don't have to do that. It's all dictated by fall rate, but and pull those little things out the side, leave them up here because it kind of airplanes that thing around and uh, good to go. Now, if you're gonna be using the bigger 4.8 inch, one thing I do is I put it on this ultimate swim bait hook and I'll link all this stuff down below. And a lot of times whenever big fish are on the line, come on camera, focus on that, focus on that, focus on that. I'll put it on this ultimate swim bait head right here. And this is a really big beefy hook right here that does not mess around. And uh, that has a much higher hookup ratio when I'm fishing this bigger size because the hook's bigger, right? Now if you're going down to that 3.8 inch or the uh, 2.8 inch, those smaller ones, you can just put them on a regular ball head or something like that. But for the bigger ones and when I'm dealing with big fish, I like to run that one. And uh, basically that's what we were using. So let's roll it. Hooked up right there. Boom. Fish on. And that thing just absolutely throttled that uh, tickle tail right there. Man, is that an explosive bite. You know, you get cold water temps and uh, you get out here in a lot of these high current areas where these fish pull up into in the evening hours and get a little bit more active. I don't think we got a real big fish here, but man, they just fight so hard in this current. And it is amazing sometimes how hard they will actually hit. I don't know if it's decent here, Mitchell, or... Oh, it's not too bad a one. What do you think of that one? It's a respectable one. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab him right here, quick. There we go, number one. Just floating a quarter ounce. Ah, uh, Kalen's Google Eye Jig. And uh, that tickle tail combo right there, something real bright, and he twisted it all up, but... It's a real nice fish to get things going right here. There's a bunch of boats around, so I'll probably film a lot tonight with this camera. But uh, there we go. It's a nice, respectable walleye right there. Let's let him go. See you later, dude. 
there we go hooked up right there another one on literally next cast just let that first fish go and uh, I don't think he's gonna be quite as big but probably a, a respectable one here it's a lot of current sometimes it's hard to tell oh I got him on top he's not that big but hey two cast two fish and it's just a, a little porker right there and man he just absolutely choked that jig <laughs> there we go that is what I'm talking about and when they're eating a the bait like that even these little guys, you know they are all about it. We had some rain today, and the big thing that does a lot of times, it'll, you know, obviously increase the amount of current, water level goes up, and it just pulls a lot of fish right into the, some of that current. And there we go, he's old Wiley. What an 18 inch there, see you later, dude. Let's do it again. Hooked up right there, fish on one after another on the old plastics and swim bait tonight dinker though not big this one's not impressive but you know what i don't even care this is we're still in that period of the spring where it's like to get the rust off the hook setting capabilities and the equipment and make sure all systems are go this guy was a long ways out there though definitely a presentation you want to be running braid for just so you can feel every little thing. There we go. Another nice little scrapper here. A lot of fish this size on these, a lot of times when you get in a lot of these tributaries real early, males are always the first ones to show up. And uh, we will definitely be here when the females get here, but can't complain about setting the hook. Just a ton of times on walleyes. Now basically what we're using for a rod and reel, um, the same combination I throw almost all of my plastics on. And this is the 6'9 medium fast Elliott. Just a phenomenal power fishing all around rod right here. If you're gonna get one rod, this would be a great one to get for that. It does a little bit of everything, but kind of leans towards some of your bigger casting presentations, your ripping wraps, uh, some heavier blade baits, your jigs and plastics, things like that. Um, phenomenal setup right there. Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000, 10 pound braid on there, and uh, 10 or 12 pound floral lead good to go. Now what we were looking for, and a lot of times I'm fishing these heavy current situations, is uh, um, a lot of times they'll look for some kind of rise. Now those fish don't like to be sitting right in the current, so you either look for some kind of seam, current seam, generally like some kind of point that comes out that forms a little bit of slack water or a little bit less current. Otherwise in this case, a lot of times when you're dealing with current, you're dealing with a bottom that's very rolly like this, right? Now generally what I try to do is find a very hard piece of bottom that falls down very fast and then I'll get up current of that and I'll pitch back behind it. And I'll, most of the time those fish will position themselves right in the back side of that quick drop. And a lot of times you can mark them on sonar and side imaging back there. But it's a spot you can imagine that current just ripping down. It hits that high spot, kind of blows over them and those fish sit right tucked up on the back side of that high spot just out of the current. So that's kind of what we're looking for on the graph. And here's a screenshot right here. You can even see some fish tucked into the bottom right there behind that real high spot. So that's what we're looking for and that's how we're setting up. Hooked up right there. Fish on. Man, just endless, endless fish. And they're all about that 15 or so inch size. A lot of males, a couple of decent ones so far, but just dealing with an absolute ton of fish. There we go, there's another one. Peace out, dude. That little tickle tail, these things are just so durable and uh, you can catch a ton of fish on them. Get them back out there. Oh boy, right away. Wow. I literally just uh, cast it out and just immediately had a fish bite. Is it a musky? Uh, it could be a musky, Mitchell. I'm not sure. Mitchell actually just caught a real dinker, and now I got a feeling by the rate of speed in which I am able to reel this fish in that I probably got the twin to Mitchell's fish here. But man, long, long, long ways out there. Oh, is, is that a little bigger than yours, Mitchell? He's a little bigger, maybe. No, he's not. He's a quarter inch bigger than Mitchell's fish. There we go. Switched up and just went nickel and like the albino shad color. It's my absolute favorite color right there. Let's let him go. 
watching this video. This is just a quick little video here, um, and I am done editing. I'm officially done editing, and I am back in a boat, which is very exciting, and uh, excited to bring some more content. And uh, these first couple of videos, they've all seemed rushed so far out on the water, so I'm very excited to kind of settle into the groove, settle down a little bit, and uh, make some awesome content for you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching. Definitely try some night fishing this spring. It's one of the best times of year to do it. Very effective, and you guys are gonna see us catch a ton of big fish. Things are just getting rolling this year, and uh, the best is yet to come. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.